able indeed. Hi, 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 everyone. Hello. Good evening from Kumase. Do you hear the rain? Can you hear the rain? It's raining. I mean, it just literally started raining just before I, I hit live. And my daughter was like, of all the times, but it is, it is good. I mean, the network is stable. I can hear myself, even though I feel like I'm screaming a bit. Please let me know how is the sound? Is it too loud? Too loud, too um, soft? I, I'm doing the best I can here. Like this is a one woman show, you know? <laughs> okay, so hi, um, Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, Precious. Thank you for joining. And I see a few other people are watching. It will be great to know who is watching. But if you are one of my silent people, speaking of my silent people, let me read a message I recently had. So there's this lady I really admire. I can't mention her name because I haven't asked her permission to. I admire her so much. I, you know, spy on her on social media, occasionally comment on her posts and all. And then there was this one time recently we had a conversation and then she says to me, I'm just taking a small pause. She said, she said, if Facebook had a mouth, it would have exposed me the silent reader long time ago. <laughs> that was such a beautiful message. If Facebook had a mouth. And so for me, I am super grateful that I get to do something that somebody somewhere doesn't even let me know, but they are benefiting from it. They are valuing it. And I, I feel really privileged about that. So thank you. This is just to say that if you are one of my silent friends, I appreciate you because at least I see the number of people watching going up. Every time I do these posts, these videos, I see the views go up. So thank you. Um, it's not loud. So, okay, okay, I get you. Linda, you've missed Kumase. Yeah, it's raining at your head. Wow, all the way. Well, so this is really a, a great time to cuddle up and, you know, get a cup of tea and some nice cookies that I had from Mudape, one of my clients this evening. Ooh. <laughs> Anyway, what's the time? Okay, 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 okay. Now to serious business. So welcome, welcome to Mind Your Business. And if you think that I have forgotten to introduce myself, oh, you do not know what's coming. <laughs> you haven't met me yet. So I am Amma Duncan. I am a corporate trainer, a business coach, founder of the Fabulous Woman Network. I am also the woman who is so excited excited to have an opportunity to share with you on my show called mind your business so funny story just when i was getting ready to come live my daughter asked me so what what are you coming to do and i just replied mind your business and she was like ouch <laughs> because it sounds like I, I was being cheeky but actually no so i chose the name mind your business because i feel like first of all Business is really empowering in terms of helping us gain multiple streams of income. So whether you have a full-time job and you have a few side gigs or you're looking to have a side gig or you have multiple side gigs, you are a full-time entrepreneur or whatever, this show is for you, especially if you are a beginner. So I, I some of you may know, I never started with business in mind that i was going to be a business person i just wanted to share stories about women and then one thing led to the other you know i started organizing events not really knowing what i was doing i still don't know what i'm doing half of the time but i have learned a lot through studying i've been to several educational institutions i've had opportunities to do fellowships Della washington fellowship a work um, I schooled a bit at um, Northwestern University, that's Kellogg School of Management. Through the Mandela Washington Fellowship, I did YALI, so I got educated at GIMPA. All these education or pieces of education, if that's such a thing, 
really, really helped me. I mean, for the past five, um, seven years, actually, I've been investing in these programs. Sometimes I pay, sometimes I get scholarship. I read a lot. I am always reading. Even now, the book I'm reading, it's amazing. The book is on my Audible. Well, I am reading several books, but the latest one, is called Believe It. And, you know, I'm just reading about entrepreneurship so that I can get better as I practice. So in Mind Your Business, the content mostly is based on my experience, my trainings, and the women, the experiences of women I've had the opportunity to coach. And so when I do this as well, this is like, I bring the questions that I get asked by the women and men in my audience. I bring them to these um, shows and then I talk about them. And God willing, very soon, I'll get the opportunity to also interview other women, hopefully live, hopefully live. So pray with me along that. And I know, I hope that these are being of value to you, these um, episodes. Hi, Rita, thank you for joining. So today's topic is how to choose which business idea to start with. So let me put this in context. Last week, episode was um, on how to identify which business idea to start. Now, I, I came around, I mean, I decided on this topic particularly because I had some of you reaching out to me. Like, like I got this question consistently that I might can't decide which one to have plenty ideas. That, that is one. And then other people, I don't even know what to start. Like, I want to do something, but I don't know what. And so that's why I'm doing this series for the next couple of weeks, from last week, um, today, next week, and maybe one more week. I'll be talking about the beginning stages, you know, the, when you are trying to make the decisions um, to start your own business. And I'll be sharing from my own experiences plus that of other people. So are your notes, books, and pens ready? Let me know if you are ready, and then I will start. I will start. Let me know. For those who are watching and don't mind letting me know, please let me know. If you are one of my silent readers, hi. Hello to you. So I've got my notes here as usual. Ready? <laughs> Ready to go. I just had a notification on my phone that there's a big event happening in Turkey. Please. If you're a business person and you're interested, see me in chambers. <laughs> okay, so recap from last week. There were three things I said that if you want to identify a business idea, if you're really serious about it, don't overthink this. I used examples to talk about the three practical things you can do to, start, um, to identify a business idea. Rita says, ready, thank you. Hi, Mercy Vossi. I love your name. Rita says, ready. Daniela says, very ready with my notebook and pen. Pa, pa, pa. I like that. I like that. Thank you. So I said three things. Find a need and meet it, number one. Find a problem and solve it, number two. And then find a desire and quench it. So I explained these with a few examples of my own businesses and a few friends' businesses as well. Please, if you missed last week's edition, it's just a week ago, like same time last week, actually. I also blog about the same content I have on Mind Your Business. So if you go to amadamkan.com forward slash blog, you will get my blog as well. So if you don't want to listen and you want to read, it's there. Comfort, you are ready. I'm giving you a fist bump. Did you hear the thunder? God is saying, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready. Hit me, hit me. <laughs> okay, so the title, as you can see, I said how to choose which business idea to start with. To start with, not to do forever, but to start with. Why did I say start with? First of all, as a child of God, I believe strongly in multiple streams of income. At least now I believe it. A few years ago, I didn't. I didn't even understand the concept. And I thought that the only way to make money was to go and work for someone and get paid at the end of the month. Thank God that I have been redeemed. Somebody say amen. <laughs> I have been redeemed. Now I know that actually I can earn from different sources 
and be okay. However, personally, I don't believe in starting multiple things at the same time. And this is why I say start with. And why do I say I don't believe in starting multiple things? I have realized, I have practiced this for myself and maybe you know as well. Focus, focusing or being able to focus on one thing at a time is so powerful. I used to believe in multitasking. Eh? I thought, oh, that's, that's a great skill. And if you're able to, you know, women, we can multitask. We are on the phone and we are cooking and we are breastfeeding. And I, I thought there was so much pride in it. But when I realized the power of being able to focus on one thing at a time, and when I also realized how unrealistic multitasking is, I have decided that actually I will stick with focus. And so for my coaching clients, I would usually advise them, focus. of course, it's not compulsory. They don't want to. Like I have a client who still is not focusing. And today we had a conversation anyway. So this is why I say start with. It doesn't mean that the other ideas you have, you are not going to do them. Oh, you will do them at the right time. But you want to start with one, develop it up to a point where it can stand on its own without you being 100% involved every single minute. You know, there's a stage that you can get someone else to run and then you go on to another idea, especially if you are the kind of person who gets easily bored and all, that will be practical for you. So this is why I say choosing the business idea to start with, okay? So for instance, personally, like I said, I had no idea that I wanted to start a business. Apart from my full-time employment, the other things that I started that brought sources of income, but I started these one by one without even having the wisdom that I should do it one by one. I guess because I was also in full-time employment and I was looking to quit, I didn't really have the time to do so many things. So one of the things I did, I used to make hampers, and that made me real good money. And then with the Fabulous Human Network and my first business, which was Corporate Training Solutions, I started doing trainings. Then I started doing events. Then I do, I like now I am a paid speaker. At first, I used to speak just for, you know, like just to support friends. But now I get a lot of money for speaking, actually. I think that speaking gives me my highest revenue. Or maybe training. No, training does, training does. So I'm a paid speaker. I have books. You can see my books on the shelf. Um, that, that also brings in money. I'm doing a lot more business consulting now. Of course, I've been doing the coaching. And I'm also doing a lot more business consulting for high-ticket clients. And so these are different streams of income. But like I'm saying, I didn't start all of them at the same time. And that really helped me focus. I can So for coaching, for instance, now I've developed two products. I have the one-on-one -on -one business coaching, which I've been doing for about two, three years. And then the group coaching for startups, which I started last year. Actually, I'm launching it soon. So let me show you information about it. And so I started this one at a time. And now I'm doing everything at the same time, but because I was able to start one at a time and focus, 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 I was able to develop products. For instance, the group coaching for startups, it has evolved. I mean, those who started with me and then those in the current group, if you meet and compare notes, you see that it has evolved because I'm able to take client feedback and make things better and tweak and all. This is what happens when you're able to focus. If you are always thinking, oh, this is a good idea, let me do it. This is and everything is a good yes, of course, they are all good ideas and they all have the potential of making you the money you need to. However, we gotta take it one step at a time. Can I see in the comments, please, if you agree with me, one step at a time. If you agree with me, if you don't, it's fine. Sound has disappeared. Hello, ladies. Let me know. Can you hear me? So Rita is saying sound has disappeared. Um, let me also check, actually. Please let me know in the comments. Like, give me some feedback. 
I am also checking from my phone. It's okay. Rita, it's possible because I just heard on my phone. And please, for the other people watching, can you let me know? Aquele, is this my Aquele, the CEO? Hi, wow, my CEO. It's good to have you watching. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, let me go on. Nana says, agree, thank you. Thank you, Nana. Precious also says, yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So anyway, now, so the real question is, for the person who is saying, Ama, I have so many ideas. Like, let me tell you right now, right now, right now, 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 now. As I sit here, let me tell you the ideas that I have. That if I could start a new business today, 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 these are the things I will do. An ushering agency. <laughs> I know so many people, so many lovely men and women who will be perfect ushers. And I get so many opportunities. Oh, I'm, I'm doing an event. I need ushers. Can you sort me? I can do that. What can I, late, earlier today, I even listed some. I would love to do a dance studio in another lifetime, maybe. <laughs> but that's something I can do. I can do a housekeeping agency. I have so many people always asking me, and I'm always passing them on to either Platinum Nannies or Gickel's agency, because I am blessed with a network of amazing women who have these businesses. I can do a catering business. Oh my goodness. Not only will a catering business serve my own business, I have many people who are always asking me to recommend such things. So yes, I can do a carpentry business. Oh, I get like, especially pallets. Have you seen the chair and these, like I'm always, my table is pallets. If you go to my hall, like I love, I actually wish I could learn carpentry myself because I love furniture. I could do that. I could do Airbnb, like, Airbnb is so easy, peasy, lemon squeezy. I could do it. I could do online teaching. What am I saying? I have many different ideas of things I can do to make money. Of course, business makes money, right? I don't know about you, but if you are like me and you have a lot of ideas and they are all potentially great, all these things I've mentioned, um, ushering agency, dance studio, housekeeping agency, catering business, Airbnb, online teaching, they can, look, even the online teaching can make me way more money than all these. However, I recognize that I can't start all of them at the same time. So if this is you, you also have multiple ideas. Maybe you, you have like 2 million ideas. Mine is cocoa to you. <laughs> if this is you, I hope that you are not sitting and thinking and overthinking and thinking and overthinking. Do you know what that, that does? You don't move. You are just thinking, and every day you're like, oh, I'm considering this idea. And then you're always telling people, I'm considering this idea. I've been considering. Just say, you alone, you've considered, sir, but what action have you taken? Don't be in that state where you are sitting and considering. Please, sitting and considering is not for long. It's something we do quick and we start taking action because it's only when we take action that we get clarity. So, how do we take that action? And that's what I'm coming to. This is what I tell my clients. Start with your low-hanging fruit. Start with your low-hanging fruit. Or sometimes I even say lowest-hanging fruit. So this is a concept I learned from some of the mentors I follow on social media. So what's a low-hanging fruit? Let's say that there's a mango tree in your house, yeah? And it has lovely fruits. You know, if you love mango like me, I drink mango juice every day. <laughs> so there's a mango tree and all these um, fruits are on it. There are some down, there are some up, they are ripe. And then you can, you can eat it all because it's available to you. Daniela, let me pause here. Daniela says, hey, this considering, hmm, I am laughing at myself. Sister, may you stop laughing and take action. I know you can do it. Okay, good, good, good. So let's say there's this mango tree and you have access to all the fruits. It's yours, it's sitting in your house. And then you are asked to go pluck some and eat or you are hungry, so you need to pluck some and eat. Please, so, will you go get a, a staircase 
and then climb to the very top and get the one at the very, very top? Or will you just pluck the one that is closest to you? That's your low hanging fruit. So, you know, there are some that you can literally just stand and then stretch your hand and then pluck. That is your low-hanging fruit. So in the same vein, when it comes to starting your own business, your low-hanging fruit is what is easiest to start. So you plant the lowest mango because it's the easiest for you to start, um, to, to snatch. In the same vein, let's say your mango tree, you are in, in, well, in Ghana, we call it a bunch, so a story building. Let's say one story, two story, yeah? And then you can stand on the, um balcony of your maybe you're on the second floor and then you the mango tree is so close to you that you can actually stretch your hand from the mango uh, from the balcony and then pluck it that is also your low hanging fruit it's fine i mean i'm just using it to explain the concept the whole idea is it has to be something that is really easy for you to pluck okay so now you you pluck it then you, you, you can eat it Or So in the same vein, our business, all these businesses that you've mentioned, which one is easiest for you to pluck? So let's use mine as an example. I mentioned um, ushering agency, dance studio, housekeeping agency, catering businesses, carpentry, Airbnb, online teaching, as a few of the things that I can actually do if I want to start another business here. Yeah? So then I take it each one by one. I mean, what you have to do is just sit and think. First, you can think on your own, and then you can get a trusted friend to think with and ask questions to. And then ask them, you know, Charlie, what do you think? So let's say, let's take the ushering agencies. Do I have the resources to make it happen fast? If if um, a company says, or somebody says, am I need people to usher? Am I able to quickly put together is it easy for me to start this business? As in, is there any barrier to entry? So for instance, the catering business, it may be that I, I have to maybe register the business or go and get FD, that's food and drugs board certification and all that. I'm not saying that's what you need to do. I'm just saying it as an example. So you look at all these things, barrier to entry, resources available to you already, your skill set, and see which one is the easiest to start with. Now, there's something beautiful about starting with the easiest one. You get motivation when, you know, because it's so easy and you've been able to start it and you are pushing, it motivates you. Like, so I think we call it the snowball effect so that when you start the second one at whichever time, it becomes easier. You, you learn from the experiences of the first. I mean, there are so many reasons why it actually helps to just start with the easiest. Obviously, let's say you are a, a CEO of a bank, like my CEO watching, or you, are, you already have your full-time job or you have something you are doing. Hold on, I'm coming. Paris, are you watching a YouTube video? For school or for homework? Hey, my friend. Sorry for the commercial break. I had to do some mommy tongues. Okay, so where was I? Yes, yes, yes. Low hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit. So please, low hanging fruit means that look for what is easiest for you to do now. Just run with it. It doesn't have to be the perfect idea. It doesn't have to be the best. As long as you have the resources. So for me, with the ushering agency, for instance, I can easily come up with... 30 women and men to go and usher at an event. I can easily print t-shirts or whatever if it is. I can easily put together a contract without needing any big time cash. You get what I mean? I have the resources to put it together simple. Housekeeping agency, maybe I may have to shop a bit more because of the equipment and all that. So maybe I won't call that a low hanging fruit. Catering business, yes, it comes with, depending on how I want to do it. I may have to buy plates and stuff, but if it's maybe something I'm doing takeout and all, it might be easy. So you just consider it business by business. Airbnb, I already have a guest room, actually, that it is always empty unless we have guests. Why not? And the place that it is, it's so away from the main house that 
it's okay. So that's also possible. Online teaching, this particular one I'm considering, I mean, I wrote down here, it is, um, I think it's in Asia and there are people who train them to speak English or something like that. And I think I need to take a few certification tests. So I wouldn't call that a low hanging fruit as compared to the other ideas. Are you following me, please? Do you get what I'm saying? Do you understand me? Please let me know in the comments if you understand me. You know, I like small fans. I just like to know that you're watching and you're with me. So, as you've heard me explain, using my own experiences, now you ask yourself, if you're watching me, either you're watching the live or you're going to be watching the replay, ask yourself, what are the different ideas that I've identified that potentially can make me money? right as in a business which one is the lowest hanging fruit for me for some of you maybe you are a great admin person you know how to take reports like write reports write letters and all that you are great at these that is the lowest hanging fruit you know there are actually people looking for writers like i crave a writer right now see this mind your business episode that i do i also transcribe it into a blog Sometimes I get so busy that transcribing it is so hard. I'm actually considering hiring a writer right now at this moment. You could be seven people like me who have who have such a need. So don't think that sit there and think, oh, I, I, I'm not good enough. Or look, you have no idea what people are looking for. Maybe you can babysit, maybe you can set up a babysitting agency or a mother, um, no, not mother. Uh, home care, home care, like, you know, in the UK and US. Now I'm remembering the job I used to do, you know, uh, taking care of people. Maybe you can work with special needs. Whatever it is, you think, what are my skill sets? What am I able to do? What am I able to do today, today, now? Those are your low hanging fruits. So don't think and overthink and rethink and you are praying and you are thinking when you have the resources already. And I promise you, when you start, you move it to the next level, you get to a level when you think, okay, now I'm ready for the next one, maybe after five, 10 years, whatever, you can do them. I mean, look around you. All these rich people we know, they don't have one business. Recently, what did we find out about Dan Gote? You know, Dan Gote Cement, she, he has another product and, you know, we're all just laughing. Yeah, these are the richest people on earth, but they don't have one stream. So how much more you and I? <laughs> you get what I mean? Please let me know in the comments. Hey, I'm not seeing your comments. So let me see. Let me see you. Let me see. Where are the comments? Okay, it's either the comments are not coming today or people are like, I'm not writing any comments. So this girl and always asking me to write comments, comments. I'm tired. <laughs> Even if you are watching the replay, please give me a comment. Let me know that you were here. You were here, Sam. Okay. Right. Um. Now, the other thing I want to say before I end, today's is going to be super short is that please, for most of us in our businesses, we have to start small. Think big, but start small. Think big, but start small. Sometimes we feel embarrassed that if we start so small and people see us, they will think that, ah, like, we, you know, ah, what is this, you know? But please, you know what you are doing. Stay focused on it. I have... Oh, Daniela, thank you. Daniela gave me feedback. Thank you. I have felt embarrassed a number of times when people have made me feel that what I am doing, I am not thinking big enough. So many times I felt really bad, you know, because I felt that I was really giving it my best shot, doing the best I could. And then someone would say something to the effect that, ah, but Amma, you can do better than that. Not in a way that is encouraging or even challenging, but in a way that makes me feel like, ah, so I'm not thinking big enough. Like, ah, why am I not thinking, you know? But I specifically got this quote and I'm going to put it on here. There's this quote by Maya Angelou that I love. 
do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. Do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. So please, whatever big means to you. You see, we said think big but start small. Whatever big means to you, it's fine in the beginning. Start with it. When you know better, do better. It's really that simple. It's really that simple. Don't worry that... We, and yes, there'll be a lot of criticizing and a lot of... Like, I remember people who would say, Ah, Amma, when you're doing an event, you have to do this and you have to dress like this and yeah, because people are watching this, you know? Asking me to do things that maybe are not in line with my values or but they feel that because of the sort of person I am, I should fit in a certain box and all sorts of comments. I don't think these people mean bad. They, they, they really just want to support me and you as well. But please remember, do the best you can until you know better. And when you know better, you do better. So whatever thinking big but starting small to you means, go ahead and do it. So for instance, okay, actually before I even go to the example, ladies and gentlemen, Every single business we know and admire today had to start from somewhere. Every single um, living thing grows. Businesses, uh, are they living things? Yeah, I guess, <laughs> because we, I don't know, maybe they are living, they are not, but they grow. Businesses grow. They don't, they don't get stagnant. At least you grow either in revenue or client base or whatever. The current book I'm reading is called Believe, Believe It by Jamie Ken Lima. It's a beautiful book. If you've seen this um, cosmetic brand, It, she owns it. Um, recently, L'Oreal, this very big brand that all of us know, they bought It for over $1 billion. Dollars, dollars, huh? Dollars. And I'm reading her story. And I've been tearing up. Because she's talking about the beginning and how they started super small for so long. Not only did she start her business in her hall for so long, like years, maybe I think from the book, maybe three, um, no, no, six years and so afterwards, she was still operating from her hall. As I did talk to you now, I am in my bedroom. My daughter is in bed right now watching YouTube. I don't approve, but because I'm online with you, I don't want to show the, the other part. Of, okay, so whatever. So she says she's not watching YouTube. But you see, I, I don't expect that. I mean, I don't really mind it in my bedroom because it's the comfort zone. But let's say the equipment and stuff I'm using, a time may come, it will improve. Maybe now the sound is not the best. The background may not be the best. The lighting may not be the best. I will grow. A time will come. You will see me, and then maybe I'll look so fantastic, and then you will think, "Oh, this woman has got it all." But by God's grace, I will still have Facebook and YouTube to show you videos of today, so that you know that what every company grows, and so will yours grow. So it's okay to think big. But to start small. Now I've started small with this my laptop. Before this um, Mac Air book, this this thing is called what? MacBook Air. I'm reading it and I'm saying it in an opposite way. Before I started using this, I got this two or so years ago. Before I was using some was it Acer or something? Some cute book um, laptop B that I I lost somewhere along the line. Growing growth, small small, little by little. So we will all grow, but don't give yourself pressure and don't allow people to pressure you into thinking that, oh, if I'm doing it small, people will laugh at me. People won't respect me. People, you know, don't worry about that. The great people that we see and admire, they weren't worrying about this. So they were just going. And so I'm, I'm going to share that book with you, actually. Let me share the link because that book is so amazing. I want every woman to read like, well, I don't say want, but I want to encourage you to read it. Not just women, actually, men, women. So let me share it. It's called Believe It. Believe It. GD in, in tree, we say GD. In fancy, we say Jizzy. 
So I've just shared, and that's the link. That's my Amazon store link. So you can buy it, and then I'll get some small dollars. <laughs> okay, so let me give a few examples of thinking big but starting small. Let's say that you want to own a suit factory. And in one of my fantasies, I think I own a suit factory because I used to wear suits a lot. So let's say you want to have this giant factory making quality suits, you know, very high, like nice, sharp, you know, suits for, let's say, bankers and all. That is the big dream. And remember, big is relative. Start that by making a suit for one person. One person. That is my idea of think big but start small. Make a suit for one person. Let's say that you want to be a poultry farmer in your entire city, the one who feeds the entire city poultry. Let's say the way Dan Gote gives the entire Africa, I don't know if they ship to everyone everywhere, but I know for Ghana, for instance, they have their product here. So you want to be the dangote of your industry. Start by giving that chicken to one family or one person. Start with one. Let's say that um, you want to, what other example? Let's see the people watching. Let me see if I can get somebody's company to use. Okay, Joyce. Joyce, today to you start your mama, I shan't mind you. So Joyce is one of my coaching clients. Joyce does um, the village mart. They supply, they shop for mothers. Joyce, please add your phone number. Let's do a quick ad for you. So Joyce is based in Accra and she shops for very busy mamas. That's why she's always using the word mama, mama. So let's say Joyce's ambition is to serve a thousand women or a thousand households in Accra every single week let's say that's her ambition what do i have to say to joyce i'll tell joyce joyce start by serving one family one start with one start with one that's a start small stay consistent and trust the process absolutely on how are you my lady so this is it really just start small don't worry and i know i can i know the pressure i have felt it so many times even just today, somebody made a comment to that effect. And there's someone who loves me very much, you know. So um, it's not like they don't they don't care. They were, you know, they just thought I could do better. But Charlie, I am in the trenches and I know how it is. And if this is what I can do at this time, this is what I can do. When I know better, I'll do better. It's fine. So don't don't worry yourself, eh? That I have to impress people. I have to impress people and people have to see that the hair have arrived. Yes, you have arrived, but I please, oh, you don't just arrive and start, you keep moving. So just move. This thing where we are trying to impress people, it, it's not good for us. It's not good for us. You, I mean, you just want to give out your heart to your customers. That's what you want to do. The people that sometimes we are even trying to impress, they will never even buy from us. Never. They don't even care. They are not even looking. So my sister or brother watching me today, I saw Nara. Hi, Nara. Please start small, but think big. So, yeah, that is it for me. I'm going to recap quickly. Yes, I've put Joyce's um, information there, the village marks. Um, you can reach out to them on 024-310-7143. They will do your shopping and they will deliver. And she will deliver. I mean, so far, the people that she served, they've always given positive reviews about her. Joyce, come to think of it, I haven't been seeing your testimonials. We need to talk back door about this. Back door, yeah, back door. So, speaking of testimonials, it reminds me that it's time for me to show you, ladies and gentlemen, that my group coaching for startups is starting, God willing, in April, first week of April. So, this is where I get the opportunity to be an accountability partner to women who are looking to start their fresh businesses 
or they have their businesses already they need someone to hold them accountable recently i was having a conversation with one lady who is considering it and her only she knows what she wants to do her only problem is she's not serious she needs someone to ginger her and as for that <laughs> as joyce i will do that for you so um if you are interested i also help you brainstorm and we have a community of amazing women who support each other it's crazy and they are not supporting each other because i say they should they know they gotta do what they gotta do and they do it so beautifully so beautifully so it will be my pleasure to welcome you in the next batch as of now i believe i have seven spots or so left and then it will be four so if this is something that interests you, please check out the link. I have put it in the comments and then I've also put it in, I mean, up there so that you can see. If you are watching this on Instagram later or LinkedIn or YouTube or wherever, you can just check the link in the bio, even on Facebook, the link in the bio as well. Or right here, you can just click on the link in the caption and it is there for you. It will be my pleasure to work with you. Some of you reach out to me and say, no, you want privacy, so you want to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I am more than happy to offer that as well. If you just check the link in my bio, I am there as one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one. -on -one business coaching, so I'll be happy to help you. Okay, so let me recap. What have I been talking about today? How to choose which business idea to start with? Ladies and gentlemen, let me just commend ECG. My light is on. Let me commend MTN. My internet is still on. God is good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jesus. So today I've talked about how to choose which business idea to start with. I hope this has blessed you. I hope you've had a, new, a few aha moments. Maybe there was something you were thinking about. You've received a little more clarity. If you have questions, feel free to drop me a question if you want let me actually leave my email address so if you don't have my number you can just reach out to me via email it's hello at amadankan.com just reach out to me if you have any questions or if there's a topic you would like me to treat on mind your business i will be more than happy to share my um um my my opinion and thank you oh i'm seeing all the hats and likes Ooh, i'm happy i'm happy thank you thank you thank you so yeah um to recap choose your low hanging fruit please think big but start small and finally if this has been of value to you please do me a favor share this with someone else just copy the link and share it help other people find this and be blessed by it because you know what what's the point in being you know hiding things that are helping us let's all share and help each other to you know grow together i believe in growing together i'm actually going to share the link so this is today's mind your business link mind your business Please share this to your WhatsApp group, share it to Telegram, share it on Facebook to your groups, wherever. Thank you so much for giving me your time this evening. I'm so happy. Until I come your way again, God willing, next week. Thanks for all the hearts. Oh, you guys are amazing. Okay, so next week I'm talking about skills you must hone as a woman in business. Unless the Holy Spirit tells me, no, 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 I'm going to wait. Talk about this one instead. But I look forward to seeing you again. And I wish you the very best. Mwah. Ta!